Hey guys, Bling Bling Bob here again with a, another install on a Toyota Turbo Diesel Hilux. Um, this time we're going to install the uh, Direction Plus diesel fuel filter uh, pre-filter kit. So um, this is really good. If you get on their website, you can see that they recommend the uh, pre-filter kit over the uh, post-filter kit for a number of reasons. But one is the factory filter is reducing the particles to the size that's required for the injectors and the system so there's no need to put the a smaller particle filter on there but this does all the work before the factory filter so um, it's re removing the larger particles from the system before they get to your factory system and also it has a much better water separation from the diesel fuel now I will say that um, if you're thinking about getting this if you use the same fuel station in the city and it's a nice clean fuel station good quality fuel all the time you will never need this kit. It's probably a waste of money. However, if you're going out west or up north and you're hitting terrible service stations, ones that look like they're run by someone who doesn't wash their hair and this sort of stuff like that, there's a high chance they've probably got contaminants in their tank and you really need to consider using something like this. And the other thing too is, if you ever consider using jerry cans, Jerry cans are so susceptible to contamination, you can see there's a lot of dirt and dust around the top. Now, I do use yellow ones myself, but I'm at my dad's house, so this is just for a prop. But there's always a chance that you can get water in here, you can get dirt in here, you can lend it to someone, and they might put some other contaminant in there. They might put petrol in there instead of diesel, and, you know, a bit of water, whatever. If you're considering using uh, jerry cans, I would highly recommend putting a pre-filter on your turbo diesel because... You get a bit of water in your injectors and all that sort of stuff like that and you can really ruin it. So I'll just go through a quick um, thing here, what the kit comes with. So you've got some 9.5mm uh, fuel hose there. Um, and that is, this is a Gates fuel hose and it is actually made in the USA. Their Gates hoses can be made in a couple of different places. But whenever you get hoses, make sure it's a, a quality hose. Um, it does come with the uh, nuts and bolts and once again it's got Nylock nuts, nuts in there. Um, some good uh, barb fittings there for the uh, install kit and of course a couple of uh, stickers and some service stickers in there as well. It does come with this um, filter. Now I'm not sure what this filter is for because I don't think it's the uh, a factory filter but I guess we'll find out as we get through the install as to why it's got this, uh, this filter here. Um, and they are fuel manager filter kits which are the good ones and then also the... Uh, the main part of the filtration system here, which is the uh, secondary unit, and I've just dropped the other filter there. Um, and this is the main part, and you can see it does have a clear bowl, so you can clearly see if there's some water in the in the fuel bowl there, and you need to let that out. And then lastly, it has the uh, the bracket for the install. So this one is obviously specific for the Toyota Hilux KUN26R. So we'll go ahead and uh, see how easy this is to install, and. Uh, well, let's take it from there. Okay, first things first is we need to disconnect the inlet pipe. So you can see here, this is not the inlet pipe. That goes down there to the fuel pump, I believe it is, down the bottom here. So what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect this top one here. That goes down, you can follow it down there, and goes to this one here. So we'll go ahead and remove that. Now, I don't believe you're using this hose again, but if you want to return it back to factory specs, you will need to keep this hose. Okay, going to disconnect the two factory clips. So this one here, this one around the back, and we will remove the factory fuel filter from the bracket. And we'll put that to the side. Try not to get any dirt in the end there, obviously. And now what we're going to do is remove this factory mounting bracket. Now there's some bolt holes here and some bolts down here. And we'll use these same bolts to mount it. Now I'm not going to bother filming the removal of this and the installation of the new bracket. 
Um, so I'll be back with you in just a moment with that installed. Okay, after a bit of heartache, I got the, um, the bracket in. So there's the two bolts here, and there is actually four bolts down here. Now you will note that, oh, you can't see the angle. Hang on, I'll point at it with this spinner. Just here, on this second one in, there's a plastic um, pine cone, I think they call it, coming in from the mud guard, so that's what the second hole's for. This one's easy enough to get to. This one with the bracket, now I did have to elongate that hole a bit, but to be honest, I don't think it made much difference. The problem is that this, this uh, bit of uh, metal pipe is attached to this here. It's got a fixed hose which goes all the way back. This one down here. Go all the way back and it, there's not much room for to flex to get it back on. So I was a bit of mucking around with getting that to work and then obviously there's these uh, next bolt here, here. So there's five holes, four bolts. Everything needs to go on this side of the metal. You can't put it on the other side or it won't fit. And then these two were a breeze to get on. So there was a little bit of mucking around. So I did chuck a rag over the top of the fuel filter. Okay, so we need to mount the, uh, the fuel filter, but before you do that, um, you'll have to disconnect this off of the, the fuel filter. It, the cable's not long enough once you stretch this, this uh, one here. So I had to undo it and redo it. So I'll just uh, go and mount that up now. Just line the slot up. It's hard to do when you're filming and trying to do it at the same time. So that goes down. This this one here goes up the top. And it's, uh, it's a tight fit on the cable there. There's no play, so not much I can do about that. And then this one, I'll actually feed this. Cable can't feed through there. But you can see I've got a bit of length there now. So I'll poke that through. And I'll connect that up off camera. And then we'll go with the next step. Okay, so before I put this in the vehicle on the bracket, um, I did notice when I pulled it apart that it hasn't been lubricated at all on any of the um, O-rings. So we're going to quickly lubricate that. I've got a dirty old drum of diesel, and as you can see, it's pretty dirty, which hence the reason why we're going to install this secondary filter. So there is a O-ring on the bottom here. So we'll quickly get some oil on that. Some diesel, I should say. Just a little bit around there. It doesn't take much, but you need something on there to for that to form a proper seal. And then this one just screws off. There's another O-ring in the center there. So put some more diesel on that. Screw that one back on. And then lastly, give this one a crack. You'll see there's a on off, so you know which way to turn it. Unscrew that, and you need to work it off. You'll see there's some uh, lugs there that line up with some lugs inside the uh, mounting bracket, and we're gonna lubricate this one here as well. So. Um, it was actually very difficult to get this off the first time. It was even more difficult get, putting it back on. So let's give that a go now. Line those tabs up. And that went together very easily. And we'll Just turn that and then you'll give it a turn. You'll hear it click. Solid click and they'll be ready to install that now. Okay, we're just going to mount it in here now. The two supplied... M10 bolts. I will actually gotta stick these washers on. And a nylock nut. Now you may need to trim some of your engine shroud because this uh, bolt on the back it was plastic threaded bolt, whatever that is is actually touching on the um, engine shroud there. Now you may have to switch these bolts around if you have a 
um, secondary battery. Um, and this will allow you to still install a second hand, secondary battery. And I do believe some of the secondary battery kits actually come with provision for mounting a secondary fuel system. So there should be no dramas there. All right, so we need to put some uh, Loctite, which they've supplied with the uh, kit. So we'll quickly show you how much I put on. I've pre-done the, uh, the other ones. So you shouldn't need much. I've just got one bead going all the way around. And then just rub it in with my finger. Just, uh, sorry, moving off screen. So just uh, like that. And then move this here. And the two plugs go to the front of the engine. We'll nip them up in a second. And the, oh, lucky I've got my assistant there to catch that. And the two adapters go on the rear of the engine. Um, now you will see, I'll show you on the other side, it's a bit easier. Both sides are marked the same. You will see underneath here, it's a bit hard to see in the, because I'll now put it on there. There is an arrow, this one points um, out, and then this one which you can't see because the points in. So these two at this front end are the intakes, and then these two are the outlets. So we'll go in from the um, fuel tank, you know, in on the back here, on the fuel tank, and then out from here, to the existing factory fuel filter. So I'm just gonna nip these up. Um, now they are a 5 8 for these two, and a, I think it was 11 16 yeah. 11 16 and a 5 8 and that will do both those because the fittings are like gas fittings or whatever, so they always use uh, Imperial American. bolts, or American ones. So I'll just uh, tighten those up quickly, just nip them up, and uh, they are a tapered thread, so uh, and they are aluminium, so just be gentle on them. Just going to measure up to do the um, first hose, cut it to length. So I'm going to feed it through the back here, up beside the barb, hold it where I want it to be, and uh, looking on the um, on the text here where the barb's going to be, and I'm just going to chop that hose. So it's only going to be about that long, and uh, I'll chop that. Um, get the next one ready and then I will show you how to put the barbs on. Okay, just going to run the second hose to get the length. I'm actually going to go over the top and under the pipe at the back here, which does intrude on it a little bit. I'm going to reach in under the dipstick here, back to where the original hose cable is, sorry, the original fitting. So it's going to do a bit of a snake. Now I've got to be mindful of the fact that you're going to have to run a second line near it, so um, that looks pretty good there, so I'm going to chop that there. It doesn't look like it's going to rub on too much stuff. We can always make it shorter if we have to, but you can't make it longer. Alright, so we're going to install the two barb fittings, or AN fittings, whatever they are, onto these two hoses. So one on each hose to go on the back of the pre-filter. So, just as before with the uh, O-rings for the, the filter, we're going to apply some diesel. I can get some out of this container to the barb fitting to lubricate it to slide it on. That is actually part of the instructions. And I'll do this other one. And hopefully we can get this on first go on camera. And you need to push that right up into the so it seats into there and that went on perfectly. So we'll just do the next one. And that's right up in there as well. So both those are ready to install on the back of the uh, pre-filter. And once again as well, I won't do it. I'll pre-lube the fittings on the other end of the, uh, the, the other barbs on, for the other end of the hose, but I won't put that on camera. All right, I've pre-lubricated the, the barb end of the existing filter. Oh, sorry, diesel on there. 
Now I'm not going to use the uh, provided hose clamps. I'm going to use the factory hose clamp because these are spring type, maintain constant pressure and they worked on the factory system and they're much easier to get to after you've installed the hose. Now it's going to feed this second one through. I have already uh, installed the other one because of the camera angle and the depth of the engine bay you can't see it. But I'll just poke this second one through and I'll probably put my hand up a bit in the way here. But you'll get the idea. It's a bit of a nightmare. About halfway on now, all the way on, and get that hose clamp around the front here. Okay, and the hose clamp's on. So I'll just give you a bit of a close up on that. There's the hose clamp fitted up the back, and both those barb fittings up the back, and we will try and get you a good angle on that. And um, so this is the outlet. Um, no lock tight required for that. And I'll nip it up off camera, and the inlet, you'll see I have to bend this um, aircon pipe, whatever it is, out the way. But, uh, but do be mindful, they are aluminium fittings, so make sure you get a get them on nice and straight. A bit easier if you're not trying to record, of course. Anyway, I'll finish that off camera. Um, and that's basically it, so we'll prime the system up after this. Just give me a second. Okay, so I've nipped up all the fittings. There, there. All the hoses are connected. So now, I have unconnected these, this wire just while I pump this up, so I don't wreck it. Um, so now I just pump this primer here until it goes firm um, I don't know how long it's going to take so I'm just going to start pumping and then uh, we'll come back to it after I've finished I can see that fuel bowl down the bottom filling up okay that's going firm now now I will say um, that I also did just do my fuel filter as well uh, the, the factory fuel filter so um, if you haven't changed that at the same time there's a chance it may not take as long as it did just for me just now but that feels pretty firm I can't hear any air in the system not that I could hear it at any stage at all um, we might uh, give that a crack and see how it goes hopefully we don't have diesel spew out everywhere so I did just try to start the car um, it didn't run we gave another couple of pumps and it, it definitely went like you could feel there was no air in it, then I could feel it's pumping fuel, and now it's actually gone firm. I can feel like I'm probably not doing much. So we'll just uh, quickly try and start the car, and uh, see if we can breathe life into it. Okay guys, that's the install finished. Um, I did spill a bit of diesel when I was doing the factory filter there. Um, pretty easy install. Um, I think I needed two 17mm spanners, um, the 5 8 for one side and the 11 16 for the other side. Um, oh, a couple of 10mm spanners to do those ones down there. Uh, pretty easy install. Probably allow yourself about three hours. I did end up taking the engine cover off just to give me a bit of room to um, to do my factory filter you probably won't need to do it to just do that straight swap um, yep should be pretty good and uh, go out and get yourself it I think it costs around about 320 or 350 um, most of the reputable uh, four-wheel drive shops and diesel shops will sell the kit and uh, you can get it online anywhere so um, highly recommend it go out and get yourself save your diesel system save your injectors save your money uh, and then go out and do some hunting Catch us later.